Well, welcome to GC365 and day 209. Hello. This is my friend, Jeff. Jeff, do you want to tell us a little bit about you? Yes, uh, I'm Jeff Idukas, uh, unique last name. Yes, it so is. So I have a wife uh, here that's been at uh, Kids of the Creek Preschool. Yep. So she's Mrs. Idukas. So I'm the other half. And they might know her because she also teaches, pre or not preschool, she teaches the Sunday school. Yes. Yep. And I have a daughter, Maya, mm -hmm. that's turning 18 okay. and graduated from high school. Nice. And I've been here at Gold Creek over 10 years. I can't even remember when we started, but I remember Pastor Larry still yes. had long With hair. Long hair. So whenever ago. Larry had long hair. Some of these people listening might actually not remember Larry with the long hair. I do. He's got a good look with the short hair and all black. <laughs> so that's good. But uh, yes, whenever Larry cut his hair, that's roughly when I've been around Gold awesome. Creek. Awesome. So. Well, and I'm Cammie Barker. I'm the logistics director here. And we just we're going to get started. Yeah. So Jeff is one of our usher leads. Many of you who have come in person probably would recognize him. He runs the team, gets us all organized, and um, I super appreciate you. You kind of saw us through some hard times when we were at the farm, and then when we came back in person, I didn't have any leads. And so he stepped right up and led almost every single week of the month yes. for a couple months. So I appreciate you. And we were just talking. We haven't sat down and had but maybe one conversation. We sat down once. This is our second time. <laughs> yes, and I think the last time I sat down with you was when I asked you to do this yes, with me. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we um, are always on the move. We are working friends, so we, we get things done. And you get to boss me around on Sundays, but... Uh, I try not to be too mean of a boss. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good because then I get to, when I lead, I get to boss That's the true. other ushers around. That's true. I just kind of hand it off, and then you take the lead from there. That's but awesome. yes, it's nice to sit and actually is. talk with you. So. And talk about the Bible. And so. read. Yes. So. Today, we are in Second Chronicles. Um, Chronicles... Well, actually, you haven't told us what you do for a living. Let's what talk about I that first. I uh, work in Bellevue. I'm a county manager, and I basically make sure the world doesn't end, so financials are all balanced. So, so fa that's what fascinating I was stuff. Say. Well, and you and I, we kind of think like the chronicles are. We we document things. We make sure things are in order. We we keep things straightened out. That's kind of my job. That's kind of your job. Yep. Yeah. And so I can relate to Chronicles. And um, something I learned um, as I was doing my research, and I knew this, I just, I hadn't put all the puzzle pieces together. Chronicles is, it's it's a repeat of First and Second Kings. Did you know that? No, did not know that. I didn't know that either. It makes sense because I've heard the names. There are very interesting names. Challenging to pronounce right. or, yes, not very good with uh, pronouncing them. But right. Yes. Hopefully I got you there. I tried yeah. to figure that out. Anyways, we, we've we heard these names before. And in sec, or in First and Second Kings, they go through both Judah and Israel and the history. And then in First and Second Chronicles, they go through just Judah and kind of follow the dynasty of David. So yeah. I, I found that interesting. So what was your thoughts about our reading? My thoughts is <laughs> I had to read it like two, almost three times because of how Chronicles go. My first thought when I read through it, reading it three times, I go, this is like Game of Thrones. I've, <laughs> I've got to watch this multiple times. I, right. I have to figure out who's the king, who's married to who, who Whose kills one whose? another. Yeah. Uh, so all the intrigue. And, and again, I, I think the third time I watched Game of Thrones, I finally started to get it. And I think after the third time I read Chronicles, I it finally started to, started to make sense, but again, the lineage, uh, who's mom, who's dad, it. who's killing who, right. not not easy. Right, no, it isn't. So we're so, going to kind of digest it a yes. little. Um, we start out with King Jehoshaphat, great king, super good. He has seven sons. When he dies, it falls to King Jehoram, right? Which is the oldest. Which is the oldest. And he promptly then kills all of his brothers. Right. He's like, all right, you well, guys are gone. That's I'm what we do. And let's follow all these other pagan gods. Yes. And not so much the, the, the one God, right? Exactly. It's, uh, again, like Game of Thrones. <laughs> of You know, I'm king. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And I'll come up with my own religion. Right. So, right. you know. It's, I got the power to do that. So yeah. why not? Why, why not? Right. Exactly. Okay. So God, meanwhile, is just kind of watching going, okay, well, I, I have a covenant right here with David and keeping his dynasty. So this is all going to happen, but we, we got to trust God's going to turn this thing around. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not nice people still. No. So I, I don't get why guy's doing it, but I'm sure there's a good reason. Right. But, uh, a lot of badness going on. Right. So Jehoram has a son, his name. Oh, no. 
first we got to talk about how Jehoram dies. Yeah. Dies by the interesting way of having your bowels come out, yeah, which a little TMI there. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm sure that something's happening there. I don't know what that is. I don't know that I want But know. again, just like Game of Thrones, yeah. dying a very interesting yeah. uh, graphic Not way. Great. So and how, no one was sorry when he died. No, yeah. no. They were like, okay, see ya. Yeah. Which, yeah, he'd kind of taken the country down a bad path there. So, yeah. Well. And when he died, his son, Ahaziah, Ahaziah. I got these names for you. Okay, good. Uh, again, no good, not great guy. He's he's king for one year before he gets killed. Right. Yep. Jehoram, eight years, but yep. Uh, yep. yep. One, one year, so, you know. And he's gone. So then it, the kingdom goes back to his mom. So Jehoram's wife, um, Athaliah. Okay. Fun good. names. Fun yep. names. You say it. But Queen Athaliah then starts killing all of her, basically, her son's family. So yes. it's all her family, too. And apparently one little baby um, gets kind of whisked away and hidden. And I, to me, that's alarming. Like, okay, Grandma's killing all the family, but she never questioned whether this, where this newborn little baby went. But thankfully, this is where God came in. Somebody whisked that baby away and took him to the Temple of God, and he was raised there for six years. Six years. Six which... years. And... Yeah, I hiding out is great, or losing, losing your your yeah, child. Yeah, your grandkid. Uh, it's I, the worst I've done is lost my daughter Maya like three minutes at Evergreen State Fair. So it's you know that's that well, was that's enough. Super scary. That's the, the longest three minutes of my life. Oh, so absolutely. Having a child gone for that six years. I like, lost mine. Wow. We stopped in Coeur d'Alene one time while we were traveling to Montana. And um, I was kind of going cross-eyed, watching kids, like, okay, we need some runaround time. We're tired of being in the car, and I'm watching them. And all of a sudden, I can't find my daughter. She's hiding from me, turns out. Good little hider. The one time that they can actually hide from you and you have no idea where they're at is, the, yeah, scary. Yeah. Very scary. <laughs> but but obviously, they they it was good. God actually probably had his hand upon that whole thing. And raised in the temple, this is Baby Joe Ash, we'll call him, and uh, the priest kind of saves the day in this story, which yeah. I think is pretty cool. He he comes in and says, "Okay, it's time to make the six-year-old the king." Mm -hmm. um, he has a covenant with this kid. This kid is part of the David lineage, and thank God he did all this because Jesus is coming, right? Yeah, yeah. So Joe Ash or uh, the priest Jehoiada, Je oh, oh, well. One not, of those names. That's going to stay in there. <laughs> I we're had not it editing earlier. that out. <laughs> no, we're not. Okay. So we, the priest <laughs> saves the day, gets Joseph, Joe Ash as the uh, king, and kills grandma, who's been killing everybody. Yeah. So we've got a new king in place. And my thought on this was okay, this is like a rollout of a new software. Mm hmm. This is a, a this is a huge change. We're get they got rid of all the pagan gods. They got rid of all the all the negative, all the bad things that were going on. Have you ever had to roll out a new software or done anything like yes, that? Yes, at work and terrible uh, two years ago or, yeah, change. I hate change. Uh, <laughs> well, when, this change was a good change. Though. Yeah, but <laughs> even neighbors that l move out of the neighborhood, you know, uh, like, is, I cr you know, I'm crying, crying. When, when they're leaving. It's like, where are you going? You're leaving us. So, Even uh, though you like the new neighbors. Well, hopefully you like uh, the new neighbors. Of course, but <laughs> change, change is difficult. Change is difficult. And I don't uh, embrace change, but... It, it happened. Even and, when it's and good for you, yeah. So, yeah, when it's good for you, I'll say that after the fact it's good for me, but in the moment yeah. I'll say oh, I, it's hard. I hate it. So. I hear you. I, how about you? Do you like change? Well, it's funny because just in the last year we've had to do a whole new changeover of some of our project management here at Gold Creek, and um, part of my role would be to lead through that. And um, it's not been easy. It's like, no, you can't send emails anymore. You actually have to go into this program and communicate. And It's just one of those things trying to – figure out how to do that and train other people. And I mean, there were people probably hiding gods underneath blankets and, you know, I don't want to worship, worship that God. I'm sure it was not easy. So I, I am thankful for the priest that stood up and did this and stood up for our faith. Go with the flow is what I was thinking. Right. Oh. That was one of my vows my wife gave me was to go with the flow, oh, and, okay. which I don't do. So. <laughs> <laughs> but You're that's on that. another story. All right. Yes. So then we go into Romans and actually it really relates to the Old Testament and mm -hmm. It's all about grafting. Yeah. I had to watch a video. I love, I love gardening. Do you like gardening? Uh, I'll mow my own lawn, but uh, gardening, not per se. You're not uh, grafting any branches into trees. No. Uh, yeah. It's, didn't know what grafting really was. So okay. I'm glad you know. <laughs> well, so I found it interesting because w the story in Romans is they are talking about how uh, the tr basically the tree of life um, 
was started with in the in the Jews in the David lineage Christ comes from the whole everything that we just read about in Chronicles is the roots of this tree this mm -hmm. is the family roots right yeah. and it comes up and we've got Christ as our life of our tree and the the Jews were basically not accepting Christ and so God says, okay, well, we can have the Gentiles be part of this tree. And they were taking the branches of the Gentile tree and putting it into the Jewish tree and saying, we're all, if you accept Christ, you're part of this tree. And I just think it's so interesting. Like any branch can be broken. If you're going to yeah. choose not to follow Jesus, your branch can be broken too. And what does that look like? And how do you stay healthy? Well, it made me kind of almost think to back to Chronicles of losing your way. Uh -huh. And able to kind of come come back come and back to the family, yeah, graft yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So redemption that yes. uh, no one's too far gone from being redeemed, yeah. and so well, and it, it talks about how God did this, offered this to the Gentiles because He was hoping to make the Jews jealous of mm -hmm. like, wait, they're doing that. Wait, I want to be a part of that. What? No, that's for me. That's not theirs. That's for me. And so they would come back to faith, and does he know us or not? Like we are jealous people. God obviously knows more than I do. So it's like the two year old toy, right? Yeah. I, yeah. You can't play with that. That's my toy. Okay. Right. Yeah. I guess, <laughs> I guess so. Again, I don't have a two year olds anymore, yes. but yes, that, boy, that is, um, again, it, we, there's always a chance to come back. Yes. So I love it. Redemption. Yeah. Good point. Okay. So Psalms and Proverbs. Twice a year. Yes. <laughs> um, something I was telling him earlier was that I, it took me two years of reading the one-year Bible. How many years have you read the one-year Bible? Uh, zero. This is, this is your number one? This is my number one. All right, I like it. Um, and I'm proud of you. Good job. You're over halfway. Well, getting there. So you are. Uh, it's a big commitment. It is. It uh, is a big commitment. But, yeah, trying to do it day by day. And, Good. yes, some days are better than others. Yes. Okay. So the way that the one-year Bible program that we read is set up is that we read through Psalms and Proverbs actually twice. Mm -hmm. And I read it for two years without actually realizing that because I don't turn to that certain chapter. I it my my phone either reads it to me or it's right there and I just follow along on the program. I didn't really pay attention to what chapter or verse I was on realizing, oh, July, you start all over again in chapter one of Psalms and Proverbs. Deja vu. It is. So this is actually something that was covered on January 26th for the Psalms. And I didn't go back and listen to the GC365 that day. I don't know who did it. I should have done that. Um, but what stood out to me was verse 14. Uh, mm -hmm. David writes and he says, my life is poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. And this was a little dramatic for me. Mm -hmm. My heart is like wax melting within me. It sounds... Like a teenage daughter <laughs> Angst, yeah, is what it sounds like. Uh, it kind of does to drama. me too. Yep, a little dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it and it just kind of. I love his cry. He just kind of lays it all out there. Like I am struggling. This is hard for me. Let me tell you exactly how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Very dramatically, but um, yeah. but poetically too. Yeah. And then in Proverbs, it get, it drops a little wisdom on us, which I do love Proverbs for that. Okay. Uh, the godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. Kind of my prayer for my kids. Mm. Praying I can walk in integrity and that they can be blessed and mm -hmm. yeah. follow right after me and following Jesus. Well, and I try to walk with integrity yes. each day, but I know I fail. <laughs> oh, um, we all do. But that's, yeah, that is a goal to shoot for. Yes, I would say you're a man of integrity. Well, thank you. We encourage you today. Hope that you have enjoyed this GC365. Yes. And We'll see you at church on Sunday. Take yep. care. Bye.